Okay. There are something I want to share with you. <coughs> but these things I have told you a lot of times. But since some of you seems not to have understood or not to remember, I try to remind you again about how to sit in a better, peaceful meditation. Number one, you meditate in group. You do, you do group meditation, either in your house or in the center, the official center. It's always helpful when you sit together in meditation. To some of you, if you find sitting face to face uh, more strong or more assuring, then you should, could do that. And before that, you should wash your face with cool water. Then you'll be more awakened during meditation. And before washing face, you, or after washing face, you could uh, walk around for a while, preferably in the fresh air. For many of you, my teaching verbally is still very, very um, useful. So please try to watch more video, listen more to the tapes, and put them into practice. The reason many of you don't have the desired result in meditation because you do not put my teaching into practice. Many times I've seen that. For example, I just tell you, you know, come here, put everything else behind. Forget your families for a while, forget everything else for a while. But then the next minute you come and ask me, my kid like this, <laughs> my mother like that, my father sick, I am sick, everybody, you bring the whole village here. <laughs> you allow only one ID car, okay? All the people are not allowed. And in here you are given special, you know, button <laughs> so that people know you are on retreat. It's number one for the organization of the seat places, because we have only how many seats in this theater. Number two, is for security reason, for your own security reason. Because suppose anybody else who walk in here, and try to, you know, mess about or make noise. Because if everybody just walk in here, it's very difficult for the security members to work. Our security member, as well as the hotel security members, do you understand? They have to do their work. If something happened to them, they will be in trouble. If something happened to us, they will be in trouble and they'll lose their job, they go to jail, they go to court and all that. You want to cause trouble to other people? No, of course not. We are here, we cause enough trouble already. I mean, <laughs> for, for the organizer, for the security member, for everyone here who work to serve us, we should cooperate. But you never do. I mean, some of you, not all of you, thanks God. But just one person, two person, enough to, to spread dust around here and make trouble. For me, and then in turn, I infect you with my temper. <laughs> Lion raw method. You read in the Buddhist Bible that the, 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 the Buddha sometimes used the lion raw method. He's supposed to use 4,800, 48,000 method to teach the disciple. One of it is the lion raw method. And a lot of people keep asking me, Master, why don't you use that method on, for us? Uh, you seem missing something, you know, like, <laughs> you teach only one method. No, I teach 84,000, 8,400,000 8, method, and the lion raw method you often experience, so don't ask me anymore, okay? Yeah, the Buddhist people think it's a mysterious method that I don't teach. <laughs> Keep asking me all the time, because they read too much, you know, on the Bible, in the Bible. The Buddhist sutra say lion raw method. Didn't you experience that all these fifteen years? Yes? You still want more, some more of that? Okay, enough. I don't, don't want to teach that often either. <laughs> it's, 
energy consuming. The reason why I talk a lot, not because I like to talk. If you know some of my friends before, or some of my, you know, college, or some of people who study in same, sometimes same uh, teacher, same class with me, they know I never talk. And if people try to talk to me, uh, me a lot, I, I would tell them off. This is not, it's not uh, the place to talk, especially during eating and all that. And yesterday I saw one of my old, oh, how you say it, fellow practitioner, and she remind me that I used to, you know, tell people not to talk to me during eating or meeting or unnecessarily. Yes. And I remember, yeah, that's true. I don't talk. I was a very quiet person. Not only in family, but uh, in any ashram or in any gathering, I keep to myself. And she said, I am used to meditate 24 hours. <laughs> Is that right, sister? Where are you? Yeah, she remembered me, but I did not remember her yesterday. She invited herself to my lunch, and that's how... <laughs> and that's how I remember her. But I do remember her now, because she was very lovely. She doesn't talk much, and she was a good, very good fellow practitioner. And after she reminded me, then I remember, because I don't re even remember people, because I don't talk, I don't interact too much with people anywhere. And I apologize to her for not remembering her, because I really didn't notice people. I told you also, I don't notice you so much, unless you have to work with me for a long time, and then of course I remember you. Yeah, I ap apologize again, huh, sister? Yes. But she remembered me, and, <laughs> and she came <laughs> now. I say you should call me sister, not master, because uh, we used to have the same teacher at one time, you know. I had many teachers, you know, I told you, huh? And she said to me, she said to those uh, at lunchtime that I used to meditate kind of 24 hours, I don't talk, and that is the truth. And this is the way you should be, if you want to be like me. If you think I'm your idol, you know, your idealistic woman or practitioner, and that's how you should do. There's no secret. You have to be concentrated, one-pointed, and respect the teacher teaching. As long as you're with him or her yet, Suppose one day you think I'm no good, or for any reason you walk out, it's fine. But as long as you're here, you should be concentrated, one-pointed, and to pay attention to what I instruct you to do. Then you have a good result. And if after you do all this, you don't have good result, I don't blame you if you walk out on me anytime. But if you don't put my teaching into practice, you do not pay attention to what I advise you, then if you walk out on me, I feel sorry for you, and you should feel sorry for yourself, because you didn't do your homework properly, and you missed out the great opportunity to grow and to achieve what you so much desire to achieve. If I teach you anything bad at all, you should tell me right away. And if you doubt me, you ask me. That's correct. So these days, some of you have expressed your doubt and your opinion about me. I have not got mad about that. I have explained to you why. Any criticism, I welcome. Any doubt, I understand. And after I explain to you, and if you still do not believe me and don't understand, it's all right to, to, to go. But if you believe me and you want to try, then you must try all your best in order to get the best result that is for you for yourself, because you spend time here, you spend money to come here, might just well make the best out of it. You understand? It's not for me. Since you have come already, <laughs> you spend so much time, effort, money and hope, then might just well do the best. That's all there is. It's not that a must for me, or if you don't do it, this is a sin or anything. No, it is a sin to you, yourself. You waste your effort and money. And should you think it's not worth it, then don't come. Don't bother in the beginning or spend your time, your energy, pursuing something else, somebody else that you think is more beneficial to you. It's all right, because everyone has an affinity to some different teacher. Different level of understanding will meet different people, different teacher. If, uh, if you meet a bad teacher, that's your own karma. <laughs> yeah, your inner quality that attracts this kind of master, your inner aspiration doesn't deserve a better master. So don't blame the teacher, 
blame yourself. Anytime you find some teacher is wrong, you change. And know that it's you who attract this kind. Understand? Mm? <coughs> mm -mm, no need. <laughs> no need for that. <coughs> and if you should have any obstruction at home, like you feel some uh, invisible being disturbs you, and that you could not meditate very well, you feel restless, agitated, you have two kinds of uh, solutions. You can put uh, my tapes, or chanting tape, or music tape, or teaching tape in the background. Not at the back of your ground, but you know, <laughs> a low volume in front of you, not at the back. Never put anything behind your back, because your attention will be pulled backward. It will be more difficult for you to concentrate in the front. Understand? Not that you, don't, you cannot do it, it is just not uh, favorable for you. Put the tape of TV, everything in the front, or music, whatever you want to hear anytime. Even if you hear the telephone or fax machine, anything, just in case, you know, you have to sit in the office and face the machine. <laughs> in case it rings, it rings in front of you. <laughs> Don't pull your attention backward. Because that would be, you know, very difficult to pull it back to the front again. And if you listen to the phone, listen with the right ear. Make it a habit. Don't listen to the left ear. Everything that pull attention to the left or to behind of you is no advantageous to you. Remember. And that is the one thing. Another thing, you can recite the five names loudly for as long as is necessary, or an hour, no? every day, until the situation improved. There's another um, prevention method for you. Another kind, you can, if you are fearful, sometimes you feel invisible being around you or behind you, or you have been possessed before you came to me, and you're still fearful, then you can put my picture around it, around yourself, like a circle. You have a plenty of pictures. Don't have to be big, just small. My size is enough. <laughs> it's not the size that counts, <laughs> it's the <a> person. <laughs> Even small picture, just make a circle around you. That's why the, the, the Buddhist, the, that's, that is the leftover for the Tibetan tradition, for the mandala. They always draw the circle. That was the beginning of it, when the teacher teach them to, to sit in the circle, yeah, with some of the artifacts that the Master have blessed and give to them for souvenir, and full of Master love and blessing. I just surrounded them, and then later they're a bit more fanciful, you know. <laughs> they add in all kind of things, and flower, incense, and stuff, and sand, and color, and blah, 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 blah. You can do anything else you want, as long as you feel good, yeah? As long as you feel safe, secure, and protected. You put my picture around it, put flower as well if you want incense or whatever, or candles also, but then don't make too much smoke when you cough all the time, <laughs> because the incense and the smoke from the candles, even though it's romantic and uh, it, sound, it looks spiritual, and many a times it could cause you irritation. And then uh, you will have a sore throat or some uh, congestion in the chest later, and it's a long-term <coughs> uh, side effect. No good. Huh? Okay? But if you can tolerate, it's okay. I don't forbid anything in our practice, as long as it makes you feel good. You could even make a bead to recite, or a rosary, whatever. But then you become too much attached to that beads and that habit, and then you forget to concentrate here, and it's difficult to call back again. Because every day we already attach too much to the outside world. You understand? Yeah. In the morning we get up, we have to wash our face, clean our teeth, and look, make up, and you know, put tight on and all that. It's already too materially conscious. Then in the job we have to conscious on money, and then go home still think of money. Remember? Yeah. So every day we meditate on either woman, man, ties, jewelry, makeup, or woman, or money already. <laughs> so when we have time for ourselves to meditate, I have, uh, or any master, you know, I just learn it from them. <laughs> okay? When I say I, it's just a habit. <laughs> we. <laughs> we should, you know, we should put our attention inward. 
That's why. Not that any master or I myself for that reason forbid you to do this, do that, because we're fanatic, because we're authoritative. It's not true. Understand now? Yeah? When we, ourselves, we should just forget everything else. Just concentrate inside the wisdom center. But when you concentrate, it looks like you look right in the front, you see? But when you look right to the front, that is uh, physically speaking. Actually, when you look with the wisdom eye, it is inside. And be, 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 besides, we are not inside, we are not outside, we are not anywhere. So it's just a matter of speaking, so you know how to do it physically. Otherwise, when you close your eyes, you shut your ears, and then everything else is inside. Then you are no contact with the physical world that much. That's why. That's why you be inside and be alone with yourself, and then know yourself, realize yourself again, that you are the Spirit, that you are God, that you are the Buddha. And that's why all the rosary and the beads and all that, at that time, it would be more <laughs> detrimental, more obstructing to our concentration. It's not that it's no good. Everything reminds you of God is good. A picture, a rosary, a cross, a Buddha statue, anything welcome. Except when you meditate, it is better to put out everything, absolutely, because you are the Buddha, you are the cross, you are God, there is no need <laughs> any other reminder stuff. But the mandala is just to protect you. Suppose when sometimes some of the people, rare, some rare individual, have fear of the invisible being that disturbed them before, and uh, the haunted memory still disturbed them, or fear of darkness, and that's why in the, in the old time they light a candle to meditate, so that person don't feel fearful. So sometimes I advise some of you to can leave the light on, and that's all right. But it doesn't mean that we have to do it all the time, or everybody has to do it. But then one learn from another and say, oh, I feel good after the candle is on and all that. And everybody does that, it just become a habit. It should not be that way. When you sit, you be alone. No need any artifact. No need candle, no need flower, no need incense. Everything is distracting you anyhow. The, the, the candle flicker, 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 flicker. <laughs> the incense, the smell, and the achum, <laughs> 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 you know, And then you sit there and you think, hmm, this is frankincense. I, I don't like it. I like sandalwood better. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you argue with yourself back and forth, and then, and then oh, two hours gone. Yeah, next time you put some other flower, oh, rose, I really, I'm allergic to rose, I prefer chrysanthemum, and blah, 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 and then you spend all the time going out and buy chrysanthemum, just because a neighbor told you that when he meditated, he put chrysanthemum, and look like Master came, and it feels so good, and I meditate better, da, da, da. You know, it, blind faith is a detrimental, it's detrimental to your practice. Everything everyone tells you, including my speech, you should prove it. You should, uh, uh, you know, you should analyze it, whether it is logical before you accept it. And I think you accept most of my teaching, or all of my teaching, because it's logical to you, because it doesn't defy your intelligence. Uh, it, 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 it's it, uh, accord with your intelligence, yeah, and with the common sense, with the most logic thinking you can think of, and that's why you accept them. And should it not be logical to you, you are free to deny it. Or tell me right in the face, write a letter to me or whatever, and let me try to explain to you if I can. If not, then if you don't still accept it, then that means you think differently. That's okay. We all have a different choice to live our life and different choice of thinking. That's all right with me. But don't waste your time if you already know this is not for you. <laughs> okay? If you're here, try all your best. Try all your best to do it, <clears throat> so that you get the best out of your money, your effort, and your time. <laughs>